Hey everyone, this is Dr. Sho, the Japanese behaviorist. And I'm making this video because I saw this TED Ed video the other day. It's called What Do All Languages Have in Common? It's about Chomsky's idea of universal grammar. This video compares Chomsky with behaviorism, but its treatment of behaviorism is rather unfair. I don't think the author knows anything about behaviorism. So, I'm here to provide the behaviorist side of the story. First of all, when they say behaviorists, they are specifically talking about B.F. Skinner. How do I know? Because there was a famous Skinner-Chomsky debate. And in this debate, Chomsky became popular by criticizing B.F. Skinner's approach to language. And of course, he did it by not reading his work. He had a biased idea of behaviorism, and he wrote the entire criticism based on that bias alone. And Chomsky got popularity partly because he was politically aggressive and partly because his theory of universal grammar was more conventional and easier to understand than B.F. Skinner's radical approach. Skinner published a book called Verbal Behavior in 1957. In it, he defined language as behavior. Just like any other behavior such as playing sports or playing music instruments. So his definition of language includes actions like gestures and eye contact as well as the behavior of infants all the way to that of adults. And this was radically different from the convention because the convention says that the language is a system of symbols and Chomsky never doubt that either. Chomsky's idea of universal grammar is basically that there is a machine in our brain that manipulates the symbols. And that's the kind of idea that Skinner criticized. Skinner criticized cognitive psychologists like Chomsky by saying that don't start your scientific research based on a convention like cognition. Rather, look at the actual phenomena like behavior. Because the only real phenomena in psychology are behavior and physiology. Cognition is just an idea. It is a fiction. And Chomsky's fiction was universal grammar. And people loved it. But 50 years later, as this video tells you, there was no such a thing. Now let's take a look at this video based on what I just described. First, the video says, The idea that there was a genetically determined aspect of language acquisition had a profound revolutionary impact. It challenged the dominant paradigm called behaviorism. Now, when the video says this, the video compares behaviorism with genetics. But this is misreading because, as I said earlier, behaviorism does not deny genetics and physiology. In fact, John B. Watson, the founder of behaviorism, clearly stated that the aim of the behaviorism was to study the relationship between the environment and behavior and then hand them over to physiologists so that the physiologists can study the underlying physiological mechanisms. Again, the behaviorist was opposing to the idea of cognition, a fiction, a convention, a myth, which Chomsky advocated. The video then says, Behaviorists argued that all animal and human behaviors, including language, were acquired from the outside by the mind, which starts out as a blank slate. Now, the person who advocates the idea of blank slate is John Locke, who was a 17th century philosopher, and he was an empiricist, not the behaviorist. The behaviorists do say that language as a behavior is acquired by outside, and I don't see any problems with that. But the behaviorist does not say by the mind, because the mind is a fiction. Behaviorists would rather say by physiology, or you could say language is acquired physiologically. Next, the video says, And there is underlying genetically encoded biological machinery for language learning. But then the video continues by saying, Many think the same biology responsible for language is also responsible for other aspects of cognition. So is there or is there not a machinery for language acquisition? This is contradicting. 
And also, if the same biology is responsible for both language and other aspects of cognition, then wasn't Skinner correct by saying that the language is just another type of behavior? The video actually clarifies one point. So, they disagree with Chomsky's idea that there is a specific, isolated, innate language faculty in the brain. There is no specific, isolated, innate language faculty in the brain. Chomsky was wrong. But then the video somewhat strangely concludes by saying that Chomsky's idea of universal grammar encouraged scientists to collect more data and overthrew behaviorism. Theory of universal grammar prompted the documentation and study of many languages that hadn't been studied before. It also caused an old idea to be reevaluated and eventually overthrown. But this is actually wrong because, as I said earlier, Behaviorists were the one who encouraged to collect more data and not to focus on the fiction. Can you alternatively conclude this video by saying if Chomsky had read Skinner's work, he and his fellow scientists didn't have to waste 50 years of their life pursuing fiction of universal grammar and instead we would have had a good understanding of language by now. Well, there is no what if in history, but there is one thing that is clear. Ted Ed, read people's work before making a video like this. Arigatou gozaimashita.